Something big has happened in the tech world, and it is surprising everyone. Huawei has officially released the Kirin 9030 chip, and this moment is more than a normal product launch. It feels like a comeback, a message, and a change in the global tech race. For years, many believed Huawei would never return to the high-end chip world, but the Kirin 9030 has proven that the story is not over. A few years ago, Huawei faced strong restrictions from the United States. These restrictions blocked Huawei from buying high-end chips, advanced manufacturing tools, and important technologies. As a result, Huawei's flagship phones struggled. They couldn't use top 5G components, and their products slowly disappeared from the global market. Many experts said Huawei had no future. But in 2025, Huawei surprised the world by announcing the Kirin 9030, a powerful 7nm class chip made mostly inside China. This was something no one expected so soon. The Kirin 9030 is Huawei's new high-end smartphone processor. It brings noticeable improvements like faster CPU performance, much better battery efficiency, stronger AI features, more stable 5G connectivity, and better heat control. Even gaming performance is close to the latest Snapdragon chips. Early results show clear progress compared to the older Kirin 9000S. The Kirin 9030 handles AI tasks more smoothly, produces less heat, and delivers great power efficiency. But the most surprising part is not the chip's performance. It is how Huawei managed to build it under so many restrictions. The United States blocked Huawei from using many top-level chip-making tools, including advanced EUV lithography machines. These machines are considered essential for creating modern chips. Without them, most analysts believed Huawei would be stuck far behind. But China improved its older machines instead of giving up. Engineers used advanced multi-patterning methods, upgraded chip design software, and improved domestic packaging technology. They pushed every tool to its limit. Slowly and steadily, they solved problems that experts believed might take 10 years to fix. The Kirin 9030 is the result of these small but important breakthroughs. When the Kirin 9030 appeared, the United States reacted with concern. Sanctions were meant to slow Huawei down, but Huawei still managed to create a strong, modern chipset. This caused two different viewpoints in Washington. One group believes sanctions should be made even stricter because Huawei clearly found ways to continue progress. They believe more rules are needed. The second group argues the opposite. They believe the sanctions are backfiring because China is now working faster and harder to become fully independent. Both groups, however, agree that China is catching up in the tech world faster than expected. Inside China, the Kirin 9030 is being celebrated as a national achievement. It is not just a Huawei victory, it is seen as a symbol of China's strength. Chinese media says the chip proves China can build technology on its own, even under pressure and restrictions. For many people in China, Huawei represents resilience and courage. For China's government, the chip shows progress toward becoming technologically independent. And for China's tech industry, it is a sign that long-term goals are becoming reality. The impact of the Kirin 9030 is not limited to China and the United States. It affects many countries around the world. Nations in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and even parts of Europe now see Huawei as a strong option again. This could create a global divide. Some countries may continue using American technologies, while others may choose Chinese technologies. This could lead to a new form of tech cold war, where countries align with different technology ecosystems. The competition is no longer about weapons, it is about chips, AI systems, and 5G networks. The Kirin 9030 is important not just because it is fast or efficient. Its true importance lies in what it represents. It shows that China's semiconductor industry is improving rapidly. It proves that sanctions cannot completely stop technological progress. It shows that Huawei remains a major competitor in the global market. And it signals that the balance of technological power is shifting. The Kirin 9030 matters because it represents China's comeback in the global chip war. Huawei plans to use the Kirin 9030 in its upcoming flagship phones, and if performance is as strong as expected, Huawei may regain a large part of the smartphone market. But China is not stopping with this chip. The country is already planning new technologies, 5 nanometers domestic chips, AI accelerator chips, China-made GPUs, improved packaging methods, and even new chip manufacturing machines. The Kirin 9030 is not the final target, it is only the beginning. More breakthroughs are coming, 
and the world is watching carefully. The Kirin 9030 is more than a processor. It is a message. Huawei is back. China is rising. And the global tech race is entering a new and even more competitive chapter. The story of the chip war is far from over. In fact, it is moving faster than ever. China has just made a breakthrough that could reshape global politics and the semiconductor industry. The country has developed a new type of laser source that produces 193 nanometer ultraviolet light, the same wavelength used in high-end chip manufacturing. Normally, only a few Western companies like ASML and Cyma make these lasers, and most of this technology is restricted from being sold to China. But now China has found its own path, one that could eventually allow it to make 5 nanometers and even 3 nanometers chips at a much lower cost. This development is sending shockwaves through Washington, Brussels, and Tokyo because it shows that China is finding new ways to bypass Western controls. To understand why this is so important, we have to remember how critical chips have become in modern geopolitics. Chips run smartphones, AI systems, military equipment, satellites, and supercomputers. Control over cheap technology equals global influence. For years, the US and its allies controlled the most advanced chip-making tools, especially lithography machines, systems that use powerful lasers to print microscopic circuits on silicon wafers. China was blocked from buying the most advanced tools, especially EUV lithography machines, which are necessary for leading-edge chips like 3 nanometers processors. But instead of staying dependent, China has pushed aggressively to develop its own technology. The new laser breakthrough is one of the clearest signs of this strategy working. What China has built is a solid-state laser that produces coherent 193 nanometer light. Traditionally, this is done using gas-based excimer lasers, which require rare gases like argon and fluorine, constant maintenance, and very high power. These systems are expensive and China struggled to buy them due to export restrictions. Instead of copying the Western method, Chinese scientists created something entirely different. Their system starts with a high-power crystal amplifier. The beam is split, each part is converted into new wavelengths, and then both beams are combined to produce exactly 193 nanometers. This avoids relying on rare gases and reduces the complexity of the system. China's prototype currently produces 70 milliwatts of UV power, 6,000 pulses per second, and a very narrow wavelength width, which is required for precise chip printing. While these numbers are far from commercial levels, they are enough to prove that China is on the right track. The global political impact of this innovation is huge. First, China is reducing its dependence on Western technology. For years, the US tried to slow China's chip development by cutting off access to tools and equipment. By developing its own alternatives, China reduces the power of these sanctions. Beijing can now move forward even without Western cooperation. Second, ASML faces a new kind of competition. China's method does not copy ASML's technology, it bypasses it entirely. If China manages to scale this up, Western companies may lose part of the technological advantage they have held for decades. Another major consequence is cost. EUV machines from ASML cost over $200 million each, and even DUV systems are extremely expensive. China's new solid-state laser could potentially be used to build cheaper lithography machines that require less energy, less maintenance, and no rare gases. If China can produce advanced chips at one-third the cost, many developing nations may prefer Chinese equipment. This would give China greater influence across global markets, especially in Asia and Africa. There is also a scientific impact. Right now, the most advanced chips, like those used by Apple, Nvidia, and AMD, are made with EUV lithography. China cannot buy EUV machines. But China has been developing better DUV multi-patterning techniques, which use multiple exposures to create extremely fine structures. If China can improve its new 193 nanometers laser and combine it with advanced patterning methods, it could produce 5 nanometers and even 3 nm class chips without EUV. 
These chips may not match EUV perfection, but they would be powerful enough.